while the questions load mm -hmm. up. Okay, so top secret, and you know we have a little bit of a theme this week. So, um, you know, because the, we do clips on the show and everything, I just talked about this, but this is for the top secret segment. Um, I'm going to make things a little bit awkward. So, um, if you go to our Flickr set, you saw a series of photos that we did. So this is me. Um, I'm wearing the men's uh, picture here, men's small shirt. Um, I've been trying to be healthy, so I fit in a men's small right now. And um, on the back of my shirt, it says bootleg hacker Johnny Depp. And uh, That is exactly what I paid for? It, it is, yeah. This is what Lamore wanted. This is what Lamore got. And so the reason for this, though, it's not a fun story. And um, I'm going to hopefully uh, send this to some of the people that are being uh, pretty crummy. So we have this statement um, that we don't endorse NFTs. We don't have ETH. We haven't minted anything. Um, we've been asked to do NFTs. We don't. Um, in the past, our team was writing about, like, here's something that's happening in the industry. These things called, like, NFTs. So we don't even have those as blog posts. In fact, we removed them. Um, we had an author that did a blog post. People said, oh, I can't tell what this is. So we edited it, and we said, okay, we don't endorse NFTs. This isn't, like, a paid thing. Still wasn't good enough. We removed it uh, completely. And then we have an editorial policy that says we're not going to even have those things up. Still wasn't good enough. So what had happened was um, someone took my photo, um, from my, like, I guess, somewhere online or something like that. And I'm not a public figure uh, because uh, Twitter won't verify me and Wikipedia says uh, I'm not You're a public deleted. Figure. They deleted my page. <laughs> yeah, you're not fine. notable. And so they took my photo and they said, oh, who's this, like, you know, bootleg hacker Johnny Depp? And um, I, so, you know, we get, we have a high surface area and people have Photoshopped you, people have registered our, our names, our, our names is, and, and made like, you know, little hate sites and stuff. Um, they, took photo, they took some photos from our about page of our team and they said, oh, look, these are just paid actors. They, they said, uh, oh, no one, no one, look at all these people here. There's no way that all these people work together. And then, um, you know, when we have our um, product pages, uh, people say, oh, there's no way people have nails like that. Oh, there's no way that people have tattoos every, like that. Every hand that is in an Adafruit photo belongs to an Adafruit employee. Yeah. And they have a manicure budget too, by the way, in case you're wondering. <laughs> we we, we, we do. We've done that before. So anyways, um, you know, and it still wasn't good enough. So I'm, I'm trying to make light out of it, but I, I do want to send this to someone. You know, I'm a person too. I have feelings like, and I'm trying to take this in stride, but I'm also um, tired of it because it's really hard when um, people are attacking the team. These are people that are just trying to do their job and we sign our names to things. So like our customer support team, they have their name on something and someone uh, is really crummy and, they're, and they decide to weaponize and they, they put things up on Twitter and they Photoshop us and stuff like that. And it's not nice. And so while this is funny and I'm doing this, this is with the back of my shirt, says, that's the reason I'm doing it because I want them to kind of stop. So anywho, um, we'll see. Uh, we have some other top secrets, so let's play video, video, and then let's talk about the floppy project you're doing, mm. and then this very cool board, and then we're going to do the questions, and then we're going to get out of here. Hey, Lady Ada, what is this? Okay, so we use this USB to serial converter chip, the CP2104. It's a great USB to serial converter chip. Um, it's very fast. It does all the control lines. It's wonderful. It's a QFN package, but with the chip shortage, it's really hard to get this one. However, I can get the upgrade, which is the CP2102. Yeah, the two is the upgrade to the 04, and it's the N version. And one of the things that I really like about these chips is they have like LED drivers. So this is just showing if I transmit data, the LED lights up, but you have to enable the LEDs. They're not enabled by default. And if you're like me and you just spent like three days trying to figure out how to enable it and you're like, it's not working because the N version isn't supported by all the SDKs and the DLLs are not updated and you have the one version of USB. Hey, by the way, uh, check out uh, this nice person, CR1TBit. They made a fork of this program called CP210X config that compiles on Linux and enables the RX and TX LEDs. Thank you, CR1TBit. You're the best. All right, Lady Ada, what is this? Hey, I'm testing out some prototypes I just put together. This is an MCP23017 breakout. And people have actually even emailing us asking to make a breakout for this chip for quite a while. And I've always sort of been like, well, I'll just use the dip chip. But I, I can see why some people would want a version that's like plug and play and stomach QT. So uh, it's got the MCP 23017, 16 bit uh, IO expander, and then we have eight ground pads on either side. Um, 
address jumpers on the back, uh, STEM IQT plug and play connector. And here I'm just testing it out with a simple blank uh, using an LED and it works great over I2C. It is a nice GPIO expander. It has like pull-ups and interrupts and all that. So um, this looks like it's working fine. I'm gonna order these and get them into the shop soon. Okay, and then we posted this up. Um, this is a Sony Mavica floppy disk camera and then you're holding a floppy drive. So what is this uh, floppy project that you're working on soon? Okay, it all comes down to Apple Talk. So we had that Prince floppy that Anil came over with and we got the TIFF data off of it and posted it to the Internet Archive and all sorts on the Internet. And um, what we really want to do is take an image of that disk because you kind of want to get the original like ISO or whatever, like the, the disk image. The problem is, is that if we take an image of that disk, we have no way of getting that image off the disk because we have like no other way of transferring the file off. I mean, like we could probably figure something out. Um, but I was like, oh, you know, I should just dump the data off the disk, take an image. And then I realized like it's actually not that easy with HFS. Um, and I wanted to also try to get like a flux level copy because apparently like that's kind of what archivists like to do. And that sounds kind of cool. Um, so I was looking at it and I was like, well, I only have to do one disc and I didn't want to pick up an applesauce. If you're doing a lot of these, absolutely pick up an applesauce board. But I actually looked at the floppy disk, um, the way floppy disks are read, which is like absolutely amazing um, that we got this to work. It's kind of like magical. Um, but it's, it's something that I think like an RP2040 and PIO would do really well with. And so I kind of wanted to just experiment with like, you know, we have these PIO examples for like NeoPixels and like Ethernet and you know, like HDMI and DVI and like that's, that's all wonderful and, and modern. But like, could there be a PIO interface for direct, um, sorry, a PIO program for the RP2040 for direct interfacing with floppy disks? And the RP2040 has enough RAM that maybe it could store, um, you know, a full sector's worth of uh, flux data and then decode it um, all at once to like look for bit errors and stuff. Anyways, I just thought it would be interesting. Okay. And, um, you know, one thing I've noticed in the archivist community, there's a bunch of people in it, and 99.99% .99 of them are fantastic. There's a couple of vocal folks that don't like new people in. It's gatekeeping. And one of the things I'm hoping when you do this project is going to bring more people into doing retro tech and more because yeah. I feel like some folks, they um, go into some of these archiving communities and they get chased out because they don't know all the terminology, they don't know things, so I'm hoping that this will help out. Plus, uh, maybe we'll have some open source stuff for people to play with. I also want to make it open source. I mean, like, again, Applesauce is, like, the de facto standard, and, and it's an amazing piece of hardware. And it's not open source, and, and they say it's for a good reason, and I believe them. Yeah. Um, but that's just, like, whenever somebody says that, I'm like, well, ooh, like, I want to try it then, you know? Well, <laughs> like, I want to build my own. Uh, high standard, and whatever we do, we'll try to always yeah. do open source. So next up, speaking of, um, this is a new board they're working on. Yes. So speaking of PIO, uh, if you have an RP2040, one of the first demos for the PIO uh, peripheral, you know, IO manager inside the RP2040 is controlling a NeoPixel. And it's kind of like perfect for that because NeoPixels are like a really weird Manchester-y bit bang protocol. Um, and we have NeoPixelate, which is the library we wrote for the SAMD51 that uses like DMA and massive buffers. Um, to write NeoPixels, but what's cool is the RP2040 can do that without as much RAM because it doesn't need to like do weird stuff with like buffering one bit as a byte or whatever, like weird games. Um, so I took the RP2040 Feather, I took off the SWD connector and shoved everything kind of to the left and then turned a bunch of the caps into 0402s to make an eight buffered output feather. And this actually is like the same size as a normal feather. It looks longer, but it's because I didn't put the mounting holes on the end. Um, so this could be good for driving um, eight NeoPixel strands from an RP2040, which is a lot of RAM and again has PIO. And I also have like STEM QT on it and like 5 volt buffered outputs. Yep. And you can still use all the feather pins. Those eight um, consecutive PIO pins are not exposed on the header. So it's like if you wanted to do like an Ethernet or Wi-Fi feather wing, you can now have internet controlled multiple LEDs. So not going to come out for this year's like Christmas decorations, but maybe like next year. Y'all are going to like this. Uh, some of the cool behind the scenes things, you're going to like it. Yeah. And that is this week's top secret. Oh, wait, I have one more. Oh, yeah. yeah, breaking so. news, breaking news. Well, we're, back. we're back, we're back, we're back with some more top secret. Okay. I forgot that what I had do, that. What do you want to do? Well, I just have the two boards. All right. 
I did show these on the Desk Lady Ada, but I thought maybe folks would like it. So this is the um, the uh, ESP32 S2 Cutie Pie. So you can see here the antenna, two buttons, STEMI QT port on the bottom, and ESP32 S2. Uh, and there's even battery pads, so you can connect a, a battery to it uh, with diode protection. And then this is the Feather Ada Logger, which has a SD card on the back, a Feather M4, um, I added a little button here. I don't know why. I just felt like it data logging. I kind of feel like having one input is a good idea. And uh, stomach QT over here. And uh, I upgraded the flash to be eight megabytes. It's kind of like a Feather M4 Plus. Okay, really for reals this time. Top no, I'm really done, really done, really done, really done.